Hello everyone, the game you're seeing right now is Behind the Beyond, a third-person shooter that I've had on Steam for a while. And uh, it seems to be mostly made of pre-made assets, though honestly, as far as pre-made asset shooters go, it's, it's not all that bad. I've played a lot worse. It's certainly not a good game, but it functions and the assets are placed in more reasonable ways than most other pre-made asset shooters I've seen and experienced. But while this game is playing in the background, we're going to talk about something that I get some comments asking about sometimes. A lot of people ask me, why are like and dislikes disabled? Why can't I see the likes and dislikes on your videos? Well, there's a lot of answers to that. But I'm going to start with the biggest one. That being, I don't like giving scores to ideas and opinions. Like, it, giving a numerical value to ideas bothers me. I hate that game journalists give scores to video games. I hate that we give scores to films. I hate that we give scores to opinions. I feel like anything we have to say about an idea, we should say using our words, not using a number. That's the biggest reason. And I understand there's a counter-argument for that. You could say, well, when someone clicks like, they're saying they like something, and when they click dislike, they're saying they dislike it. What's wrong with that? Well, I think a lot's wrong with that, because... Human opinions don't work like yaha uh -huh and nah. -uh. If you like something, there's a reason you like it, and if you dislike something, there's a reason you dislike it. And it's important to be able to explain why. Then there's also the fact that nobody likes or dislikes things for the same reason. Nobody can agree on what likes and dislikes mean. Like, for example, if someone likes or dislikes a gameplay video, why? Do they dislike it because they dislike the gameplay footage? Do they dislike it because they dislike the game? Do they dislike it because they dislike the person? And if they like it, do they like it because they like the way the person played? Do they like it just because they like the person's voice? And you could leave a like and also explain why you liked it. And you could leave a dislike and also explain why you disliked it. But I could also just give you the option to only explain with your words, which is what I opted for. I think having likes and dislikes enabled encourages shortcuts, it discourages critical thinking, and it makes people less likely to explain how they feel with words. It's also the fact that sometimes people like and dislike videos without actually liking or disliking the thing they're liking or disliking, which just makes the entire metric useless. So yeah, basically, uh, if you want to have an opinion, just say it. That's, that's why likes and dislikes are disabled, and why I don't really like them. I don't think they're good. I think they are bad. But, you know, that's only on my channel, my incredibly small channel, which, in the great scheme of life, has very little bearing. There's a ton of smaller reasons why I don't like the like and dislike system. Like, there's a lot of people that refuse to separate like and dislike from good and bad. There's a lot of people for which those things are synonymous. They're not synonymous for me. So I find it disturbing to have a rating system where those things can be interpreted as synonymous. There's a lot of reasons, but I, I feel like I gave plenty already. So let's talk about Behind the Beyond a little more, because even though this is a really cheap game that uses mostly pre-made assets that most people seem to dislike, and I don't think anyone has ever finished or ever will finish, I still want to talk about it. Personally, I don't think the game is all that bad. It is certainly not good, and I do think it is bad, but not all that bad. Enemies take few enough hits that it's kind of kind of simple to destroy everyone. The enemies don't even respawn, so when you restart from a checkpoint, all the enemies are still dead. That lowers the difficulty immensely and mitigates a lot of the frustration of playing. And the frustration of playing mostly comes from the fact that it's difficult to tell where the bullets that are hitting you are coming from. You're going to know when you're getting shot at, because the gunfire sounds are loud. So you will always know when you're being shot, just not where you're being shot from. Also, sometimes the bullets hit invisible walls, which makes it impossible to shoot the enemy. But that only happens in a few locations. You die rather quickly in this game, checkpoints are pretty far apart, and oftentimes there aren't enough enemies between checkpoints to make it interesting to traverse, especially since enemies don't respawn. 
But uh, I'm still enjoying playing it. And that's mostly because I really like pathfinding. That's like one of my favorite things is pathfinding. And it's increasingly rare in modern video games. Like, finding the way forward is a thing you have to do less and less. But in this game, it's incredibly difficult to know where forward is. Everywhere has enemies, everywhere is visually distinct. You can't tell where forward is. You just kind of have to work it out. And that probably doesn't sound too appealing to a lot of people, but it is appealing to me. And it's why I like to hunt down the Freeman also. At least the first half of Hunt Down the Freeman. The second half had level design that goes beyond pathfinding and just into confusing st stuff, confusing nonsense, but I really enjoyed the first half of Hunt Down the Freeman exclusively for its pathfinding. I'm not any good at first-person shooters, I don't really have an opinion on the shooting in that game, but I loved the pathfinding. The final level of this game, unfortunately, is one big stealth smorgasbord, and I'm not a big fan of it. Like, there's some light stealth everywhere in this game. The enemies don't notice you unless they see you or you're running near them or that you shoot at them, and that can be fun to take advantage of, but in the final level, you don't get any weapons, and it's just like a huge maze leading to the exit. And while the maze part is fun, I... I feel like there should be more checkpoints because it's just too easy to get slaughtered when you don't have a gun to fight back with. Also, yes, I know the word is smorgasbord. I'm aware that's how you say it. I'm saying it wrong on purpose. Oh, there's some other things I should probably mention about why this game is not exactly appealing to play. Uh, the sound is very poorly balanced. It may not seem all that bad right now because I did some tinkering, but... For some reason, when you start the game, none of the sound effects are normalized, and the gunfire is obscenely loud. It will blow your ears out. I'm not joking. It is really, really loud. And there is a way to lower the volume, but the lowered volume only takes effect when you turn the game off and turn it back on. So, that's no good. Uh, the graphical quality is directly tied to whether you can see what's going on. For example, I have post-processing on medium. If I were to turn post-processing on low, everything would turn gray, and it would be really, really difficult to see anything that's happening at all in this video game. I don't understand why that's the case. There's not really any music that I can tell. I mean, maybe I just can't hear it, but there's a distinct lack of music in this game, which makes it less pleasant to experience for me personally. So why did I have fun playing this? The thrill of discovering the unknown, of course. From what I can tell, no one's ever beaten this game. It seems unlikely anyone ever will, and I'm not even sure anyone's beaten the first level, in fact, but I have. I've done that. And the pathfinding into the unknown, into a, a, an experience no one's ever explored before, it's appealing to me. And this game probably looks really bad, but I don't want you to have an incredibly negative opinion on this game when it certainly could be so, so much worse. In fact, if you're looking at this right now and thinking, wow, this is the worst third-person shooter I've ever seen, I want you to go look up Cyborg Invasion Shooter, which is also on the same channel, and watch that, because that is worse, and it will help you appreciate this game more. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all I want to talk about behind the beyond, really. I'm glad I finally made a video on it and finally played it, but it's not like uh, not like I got a lot to say. Mostly just played it for the pathfinding and discovery. And it's not like ukulele or something where every discovery is something I want to catalog or whatnot. But there you go.